by Greedy 3D as now you know how I like to try out new things today I'm going to be trying out these the Army Painter Speed Paints I'll tell you what I thought of them I'll tell you what I've learnt in the process and we're going to be making this the Sanix Game of Thrones Daenerys and Drogon bust if you want to see how I made this it's going to be a step by step guide stay tuned and if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe <music> Of course everything's going to get a coat of matte black for a base layer and I'm using the Army Painter air paint set here to do that. I've also made sure that all these parts fit together really really well. We want to be doing that before we touch any paint onto the model. Um, once everything's had a base layer of black I'm going to use the colour triad, the skin colour triad that I always use and I'm going to pop on some of this skin colour starting with the darker tone first and I'm going to just go from the top using the shadow and the light as if the light it's coming from a top down and I'm going to make sure I've got all areas covered. Don't forget with this model she's got a gap in her skirt so you need to get the leg right the way up to the top of the thigh and go underneath as well. Once you've done that change the colour to the next colour in the triad the barbarian flesh and just touch over the uh, base layer. We're giving it some layers, we're giving it some depth, we're giving it some variation and the wildling flesh does exactly the same covering it all giving it the lighter coat. Now once you've got the wildling flesh on I want to give it a bit of life, I want to give it a bit of blood flowing between the skin. So turn to alien purple, a drop or two mixed really well with water and just liberally give it a coat over, not too much, we don't want to ruin all that work and turn a purple, we just want to make her look like she's got some uh, blood going through her rawhide brown next on the boots to give it a base layer over the black, followed by a bit of bullwhack brown to highlight the boots and make them look a bit pizzazzy. Using some pure red, I'm going to dry brush some makeup onto her face. Put some paint on the brush, get most of it off using a kitchen towel and just gently brush it across where her cheekbones would be. This will give her a little bit of a look like she's got some makeup on and just give a little added texture to her face. Using some matte black now, I'm going to go into the centre of the eyes. Now you know I like to do my eyes this way. So just follow the contour of the inner part of the eye and just outside of that with the black and this will allow us then when we do our next step which is here as you can see I did the white we'll give her a kind of eyeliner effect now you need to decide where she's looking up left down right and once you've decided you drop the pupils in on the left and the right side and just look at them and make sure she doesn't look google boggle eyed once you're happy with the positioning of the pupils as you can see there I've done one eye and I'm going to do the next eye once you're happy with that use the pupils as the irises just make them bigger use them as a central point build them and you tend to find if you do a semicircle from the top of the eye leaving a white gap underneath the eye that will tend to look okay but it's entirely up to you how you do eyes nobody likes doing eyes they are so so difficult and I certainly don't find them easy but make sure you take your time with them and build the eyes so that the irises look the same either side now for her irises I'm going to give her a violet colour so I'm just using a, a slight off shade purple and I'm going to keep it to the inside of the black iris just as much as I can and dollop them in. The hair was done using the speed paint pallid bone over a layer of white and oh my look at that blonde hair effect that it's given. Next speed paint I'm going to use is for a clothing. I'm going to be using the Grave Lord Grey. It's really like an ink when you put it on. It's a funny old sensation and you think, oh my, this doesn't feel or this isn't going to look good. But you just let it dry and it kind of does its magic and settles into the gaps. You get darker colours in the gaps, lighter colour at the front. It's an absolute pleasure to use. Well, just look at the effects you've got there. I mean, amazing. As it dries, it really comes into its own, as you can see. Just take your time with this. The only thing I found with it is it does bleed into other colours so if you're doing around a chest area or around the legs just be really careful as there was a couple of areas I did have to touch up because it had bled into the other areas it is a water it's like a liquid based so be careful now I did feel that it needed two coats so I allowed the first coat to dry and gave it a second coat and it, it did add to the colour and it did add to the shading and the effect but it didn't ruin the magic speed paint effect it looked absolutely awesome still it's the little things that make your models look nice. Now I've used some leather brown and using a dry brush from the Army Painter and that dry brush technique we spoke of earlier. I'm just covering over her dress and her uniform and it, it just brings out the, the material and it brings out the fact that some parts are higher and lower and added to that Army Painter as well which has already done a little bit of that job. It really does make it look amazing so don't be afraid to dry brush your models. 
and this is why this is what you get doesn't it look absolutely amazing uh, bits of lighter parts of the shade especially where the uniform would or her clothing would poke out uh, darker on the inner layers looks really really lovely doesn't it without gluing your fingers together we're going to assemble her now and I'm going to stick both her arms on there as I said earlier I'd already made sure that these parts fit perfectly before I did the painting process as the last thing you want to do is get to this stage and realize that they don't fit pop them in hold them still till they can't move and they'll set lovely now again we talked about the finer points I'm just using a little bit of skeleton bone here and I'm going to trace wherever I see some stitching on a uniform there's quite a few places and it's the little things like this as I said earlier that just set the model off we didn't need to do this but the overall effect from doing it is absolutely astounding now some of you might find this a chore I find it really relaxing a really narrow brush music on in the background and I'm lost I'm away with the fairies more finishing touches now and some Vallejo gloss varnish I'm just going to color in her lips give them a nice shiny appearance and also her eyes Dollop in each eye, be careful with this, dry brush and make sure your paint's dried before you do it. And voila, all done. On now to the main body of the dragon and I'm just going to use a little bit of painter's touch black matte paint to give it a base coat. I could have done this on the airbrush but because it's such a big piece I decided to use the spray paint to do it. Now the spray paint's a little bit shinier than I would like but that's easy enough to fix when we do the spray painting and we're going to come back to that in a second. Give it a good coat. Um, you don't need to give it loads of coats just make sure you get every little bit of it. Now back into my airbrush studio aka my man cave and starting off with some regiment grey I'm going to give the model a liberal coating I'm going to dull down that black that you saw and once I've done that I'm going to give it some cadre grey and I'm going to just give it some highlighted areas around the edge I don't want to give it a complete coat I'm going to use this as a little bit of shading and now I'm going to give it a bit of green it is a reptile at the end of the day and now it's time to introduce a little bit of green uh, once we've got that base layer on uh, I want to make sure I don't get the wings with this as such I just want to get the main parts of the scales I'm going to lighten them down with a little bit of that exile green just to give it a little bit more change and depth to it the spray painting was a long old process and charred bone is the next level just to take the edge off the green I don't want him to look green par se I want him to have a green tint towards him and once I've done that taking the bleached bone part of the colour triad again and I'm just going to lighten some of that down giving it a more depth uh, next onto the wings and I'm going to start off with the carmine red you focus focusing on the inner aspect of the wing in the majority and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to layer by layer reduce the red pure red for the centre part and I'm going to spray it on try to you want to make it look like it's fading really so new onto the third red the arch angel red and this is going to be more on the outer edges of it um, just to try not to overlap things make them smooth and finally using a bit of imp yellow I'm going to do the outer edges of the wings and there's my shaded effect on the wings all all done using a little bleached bone I'm just going to do the claws the uh, horns that stick out of the head and the horns if you like that stick out of the wings I'm just going to touch the edge of those to give them a bit of an effect uh, like bone sticking out and now to the painting so the first thing I learned when I did the speed paint before was that when you do it over the wrong color it comes out a really weird color so I'm just going to base layer the mouth with pink that's not the final color don't worry that's well over the top you will see why I've done that in a mo and now I'm going to take a little bit of the hardened leather and I'm just going to work that into the back of the throat just to give me a little bit of a contrast in the back of the throat and change the depth of the color in the back moving on to some dragonfly yellow for the eye base and again this isn't going to be the final touch this is just going to give it a layer for the speed paint and corpse pale there will be the teeth again giving them a bit of a layer for the speed paint I'm going to use in a moment now make sure you check out my previous video it shows you how I glued those wings together using some resin welding don't forget to check that previous video and let the magic begin using some zealot yellow I'm gonna pop it in the eyes just look what a couple of dollops of this does to the eyes absolutely amazing wait for it wait for it I've done nothing but dollop it in and just look at those eyes absolutely incredible 
Same again, using the pallid bone on the teeth. This is gonna give your dragon's teeth a little bit of yellowing, a little bit of staining. He doesn't brush his teeth. He's a dragon. Just pop it on. I'm not being careful with it. I'm just liberally applying it and it's changing color. It's sitting in the background. It's popping the full color forward. Oh, it's amazing stuff, this speed paint. And boo, look at those teeth. Absolutely incredible. More speed paint magic and brace yourselves using the blood red to do his tongue. You wait till you see the colour this thing comes out. Not only does it look an amazing colour, when you look really closely, some of the darker colours have settled into his tongue. Oh, it's really incredible. Just look how vibrant and red that looks. Amazing. I am so, so impressed with these paints. I'm just using the same paint to go over his gums. Uh, just a light coat really, just to make it look like there's a little bit of blood flowing through those gums. And again, the effect was amazing. I just, I'm gobsmacked. I can't, uh, I can't tell you how happy I am with the outcome. Um, back to basic old grey and I'm going to dry brush on the base just to get rid of some of the airbrush colours there and then I'm going to move on to the battlefield basing kit from the army painter. I'm going to pop some glue on there and use some of the sand effect, the grit effect that comes with it which you just sprinkle on liberally. You don't have to be too careful with this. Bang it all over it, throw it on, just make sure you don't get it everywhere. Then I'm going to pop a little bit more glue on there and I'm going to turn to the grass effect and I'm going to sprinkle that all over it. So just grab it between your fingers, sprinkle it on, give it a waggle, shake it off. The new grass effect and your base effect is done. Uh, a final touch now is just a few little hairs of grass that I'm going to pop on there. And uh, voila, get the glue, pop the glue on and Daenerys will join her dragon. And I'm going to call this model once and for all absolutely complete. What an amazing experience. I've thoroughly enjoyed it.